Dark Sky at Morning, Chapter 1 I woke up to my alarm clock's harsh tone. Like any other time, I slapped the darn device's snooze button and rolled over. As I did so, the harsh sunlight pierced my eyelids and forced whatever sleep that was left out of me. I turned over again and then sat up. Immediately, the smell of bacon, eggs, and sausage cooking in the kitchen hit my nostrils. I rolled my eyes and got out of bed. After doing so, I slipped on a pair of sweatpants and a blue t-shirt and went out of my bedroom door. When I walked into the kitchen, I was greeted with a morning sleepyhead. My sister Jessica stood at the stove preparing breakfast. Morning, I said, looking at the food cooking and the plate of eggs steaming on a plate nearby. I looked around and asked, which is mine? Half is yours. Lizzie and I will share the rest, Jessica replied, gesturing to the plate of eggs. Pointing to the microwave over the stove, she added, Sausage and bacon is in there. Thanks, I said as I went to get my food. As I went and took a seat in the dining room table, my other sister Lizzie entered the room, having just woken up herself. Smells good in here, she said. Jessica pointed to her food, and Lizzie soon joined me at the table to eat. It wasn't much. Bacon, sausage, eggs, and toast. But it was still great to wake up to it prepared for us. You're welcome, Jessica said as she sat down with her own food. Oh, I didn't know it was a favor, I said as I took another bite. Nothing's free in this world, Jessica said with a smirk. Yeah, sure, I replied, paying her no attention. I looked around the room, noticing how quiet it was, and asked, Where's Mom and Dad? Jessica replied, They left, remember? Oh, yeah, I said. I had forgotten that my parents had said that they were going out of town in the early hours of the morning. Our grandfather, Granddad as we called him, had recently suffered a stroke, and our parents spent every other weekend up in Charlotte where he lived to take care of him. It was weird that I had forgotten already, but after all, since being away at college, just now coming home from the summer, I found myself catching up, having to catch up a bit. That being said, I spoke up after swallowing a mouthful of eggs. What's y'all plans for today? Lizzie and Kate exchanged glances. I had figured that, since I was coming home after a year of being away at college, my parents would want my sisters to spend time with me, and all, and all while I was on break. But I knew my sisters, and I knew that they likely had other plans. Well... I had planned to go to Kathy's house for the day, Lizzie replied honestly. Mrs. Durham was going to pick me up. And I was going to spend the day at the mall with my friends, Jessica added. But we all can stay here if you like, Lizzie added in quickly. Jessica shot her a look that I recognized as a, why did you say that look? Nonetheless, I just nodded and said, oh, okay. I'll just stick around here. I could actually use the alone time. Lizzie and Kate just nodded and we continued to eat in silence. A few hours later, my sisters began to get ready for their day. Mrs. Durham came, as Lizzie had said, to pick her up. I knew the lady decently, and she greeted me as I opened the door for her when she rang. She immediately remarked about how much I've grown and how much I've changed in appearance since I left. As Lizzie raced to collect her stuff, Mrs. Durham asked me how school was so far, and I answered it was fine, and asked her how she was doing. The typical stuff. As soon as it had begun, it was over, with Lizzie going out the door and Mrs. Durham explaining that where they were going and how long it would, they would be gone. I shut the door and went to sit down on the couch, turning on the TV to National Geographic, while Jessica continued to get ready for a day out. About an hour later, as the program I was watching ended, I picked up the remote and started to search through the channel guide for another. My parents had gotten a cable network subscription since I had left, and I was getting used to having to use it over regular broadcasted TV. But just as regular TV, there was little to choose from in the way of entertainment. I wasn't much of a TV person and only found myself turning it on whenever I was bored or had something specifically in mind to watch. Since neither was the case, I turned on Discovery Channel and left it there while I sat down on the couch to surf the internet on my phone. When I put down the remote, I pulled up my phone's browser and began reading the headlines from MSNBC, my home site. Strangely, the site wouldn't come up. I thought nothing about it and went on to other sites. I found my way to Reuters and began to read. There was the usual economic news, the typical domestic news, and the annoying celebrity news that no one cared about. Then there was the international news. One article that had just been posted and labeled breaking news caught my attention immediately. The headline read, Large mushroom clouds spotted over major U.S. cities. I blinked when I saw that headline. I immediately opened the other article and began to read. Not long after I saw this article, I grabbed the remote again and changed the channel to CNN. Oddly, there was no signal. I went to the channel guide again and found my way to MSNBC. No signal either. I flipped to Fox News. No signal, there, no signal there. I changed it to CBSN. 
same as the last. Resorting to the last channel in mind, I went to BBC News. Jackpot. I was greeted by a headline that read ominously, large mushroom clouds spotted over major American cities. On the screen was a shocking amateur footage that showed ominous yet distinct mushroom clouds rising over what appeared to be Los Angeles, New York City, and Washington, D.C. I couldn't believe it. This had to have been a dream. It seemed so surreal, but no, it was real. The anchorman was saying how much footage was coming across the country of similar clouds appearing over other cities across America. He was promising that they would begin to show that footage soon. The anchorman was no more finished saying this when the broadcast was cut short and an eerie standby message appeared on the screen. A droning alert tone then began to play. Jessica, who had been in the bathroom in the hallway, had heard the tone and was in there. It was in time to witness the next part. We interrupt this program. This is a national emergency. Important instructions will follow. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. This is not a test. A nuclear attack was commenced against the United States. Fifteen nuclear bombs have detonated in several areas across the country. They include Baltimore, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Detroit, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, New York, Pennsylvania, Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon, San Francisco, San Diego, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. At this time, all residents within a 400-mile radius of these areas should seek a fallout shelter. Fallout is a product of nuclear attacks. Prolonged exposure to fallout will result in certain death. If there is a nearby location that has been designated as a fallout shelter, go there now. Otherwise, seek shelter in the interior part of a strong building on the lowest floor. Make sure you have food, water, and a battery-powered radio with you. Do not exit the fallout shelter until the all-clear has been given. Tune to a station that is serving your area for more information. The President will be speaking on all stations shortly. Stand by for this message. This is an emergency action notification. All broadcast and cable systems shall transmit this emergency action notification message. This station has interrupted its regular program at the request of the White House to participate in the emergency alert system. During this emergency, most stations will remain on the air providing news and information to the public in assigned areas. This is WPIX. We will continue to serve the New York City area. If you are not in this local area, you should tune to stations providing news and information for your local area. You are listening to the emergency alert system serving the New York City area. Do not use your telephone. The telephone lines should be kept open for emergency use. The emergency alert system has been activated. Both Jessica and I stood there transfixed by what we had just heard. The message began to repeat itself. Is this some kind of joke? Jessica asked me, looking at me, clearly indicating it was not funny. I shook my head and just listened as the message repeated itself. For me, I was in disbelief. Was this some kind of an attack? But who was attacking us, and why? Was it a terrorist attack, or something worse? Was an old enemy, enemy of ours deciding to finally make good on their threats? Either way, I knew that the first priority of mine was to get my sister back. I grabbed my phone and hastily began to dial Lizzie's phone number. What are you doing? Jessica asked as the phone rang. Calling Lizzie and having her come right home, I said. So this isn't a prank or something? Like on those YouTube videos? This is no joke, I replied. Call mom and dad and let them know what's going on. Jessica briefly eyed me suspiciously as if she didn't believe me. But as I returned the look, giving, letting her know I was serious, she did as she was told, fishing out her cell phone as I continued to ring Lizzie's phone. I was cut off by an all circuits are busy message. I hung up and tried again. I got the same message. I cursed. Already I said to myself, this couldn't be happening. I turned to Jessica who looked back at me and told me the same was happening to her. What do we do now, she asked. I was about to reply and was mid-sentence when the lights in the room suddenly went out. Simultaneously, the TV and the phone line suddenly went dead, and all was quiet and still.